What's up guys? Uh, I'm here today to bring you a review of the Bear Grylls Gerber Ultimate Survival Knife. And I got the sharpening tool. I'll save that for a second. Uh, first off, right out of the box, this knife is amazing. But it does have some downsides. Go over the sheath first. Uh, it's a good sheath. The sheath is made in China. It's not American made. It's got the tag right here. Made in China. I don't know if you can see it. Um, it's a pretty good sheath uh, for what I've been using it for so far. Hasn't let me down yet. It's got straps on the back right here for uh, backpack straps. The thing about these straps is they are super tight and they are nearly impossible to get on to a belt. I'm sure like if you had like a backpack strap you're gonna hang it on or something it wouldn't be too bad. You just have to like pry it open and then stick it in there. Uh, got the little pamphlet here shows you some survival tips. Uh, another strap right here and one that goes this way for a belt. This one's easier to get into, the horizontal one right here, um, to put a belt loop in. Uh, the, the thing I like about the strap or the sheath is it has rescue signals right here. It has a list of rescue signals, um, distress symbols and so forth, so it's, it's pretty useful for that purpose but as far as durability goes just the the sheath overall I'm not quite sure because it's made in China I haven't took it on any real treks yet uh, they're yet to come I'm actually going to the Smoky Mountains this summer with my dad and my brother I'm bringing this bad boy um, alright so that's the sheath let's go over the knife uh, the this rubber nylon sheath is very good too. It's uh, it's pretty well made, pretty durable rubber. I don't know exactly what it is. I uh, got the sharpening stone on the back. Um, I got the special tool though, recommended for the knife. So I don't use this stone because I don't want to chance anything. Uh, it comes with a whistle. The whistle was up here attached to the knife hole earlier but it was hanging down and you can't put your arm through it, you can't use it as a lanyard. So I just took that off and wrapped it around the end right here. And it's not wobbling everywhere. You see it's not it's not really in the way. I'm gonna tie a lanyard later with some 550 cord. But the rubber sheath part is 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 really good. It feels it feels good. Uh, I got the the fire starter right here to pull out water tight. Uh, which really doesn't make any sense because you can just wipe it off. <laughs> it's water. Um, pop that back in there. It's actually a pretty tight fit. It's not going anywhere. Alright, now for the good part. Get the sheath out of the way. So. Recap on the sheath. The rubber part, this part, is very good and solid, very durable. Got the grinding stone, sharpening stone, got the whistle. This part of the sheath is made in China, but it does have rescue symbols on the back. Uh, pretty helpful tips there. Okay, now for the knife itself. This knife, I've, I've tried to look for a, a fine edge, but I couldn't find any at the place I was looking for. I got this at, uh, Mount Gander in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, <clears throat> I didn't find a fine edge. I'd, I'd rather prefer a fine edge than serrated edge for uh, multiple reasons. But you know, it's still a, it's still a good knife. Um, right on the box, the grip feels perfect. It fits amazing in your hand. Um, it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere, you know. It's pretty good grip, pretty uh, rubber, solid grip. Got the hammer pommel at the bottom to uh, hammer whatever you prefer. <clears throat> and this part right here, the part that looks lighter than the blade, 
I don't know the exact name for that because I'm not an expert, but I do know you use it to strike. You just use this part right here and strike it. Strike the fire starter and it causes sparks. And you can use your imagination to figure out the rest. So that's the fire starter. Um, two loops right here at the top of the grip so you can uh, mount, a, mount it to a spear. Got a loop at the bottom for a lanyard or whatever. <clears throat> uh, pretty sharp, very sharp. It's about a four inch blade. I haven't measured it, but that's what it looks. That's what it looks like. But it's a very good knife so far, like I said. I would rather prefer a fine edge than serrated edge. Because I mean you could use a serrated edge for sawing, but I mean other than that it's not really that useful. Okay. Now for the sharpening part. I got the field sharpener, the Gerber Bell Grills field sharpener right here. It's got on the, the holster, it's got um, an SOS signal. That's pretty good. Now, when we sharpen this, it's got the, the fine edge right here on the top. And then it's got the ceramic for getting the initial edge on the knife. So first we're going to use that. These right here are for sharpening the serrated edges. These bars at the top and bottom. So I'm going to go ahead, put it on a solid surface right here. I'm going to go ahead and get that fine, that initial. Go ahead and get that, do that a few times. I'm going to turn it over and use the fine edge to really get that sharpness. Just, I, I do it more, but for video purposes. Alright, and for the serrated edge part, you just lay it down. Like this, I don't know if you can see it. I use the smaller one for the smaller spaces and the bigger one for the bigger spaces, of course. So you would basically just take it, fit it in the space, and just push it through like that. And then turn it over for the bigger ones. Just go through those. I usually do good on the roll, the row, twice. And that's basically it. Just get that serrated edge. So this knife. It's badass, I'm not gonna lie. Got the sharpener. I would recommend it. Uh, 10 out of 10 blade. If I had the fine edge, it'd be a 12 out of 10 blade. But um, that's it. And thanks for watching. So, yep.